I definitely would consider myself an artist first um, that uses textiles, uses quilts. I want to explore all the limitations within quilting and see what I can and can't do, pushing images and text to the boundaries. Michael is an artist, definitely fearless. He breaks the rules of quilting. That's why his quilting is standing out. I've figured out my style. It's dealing with all these shapes and colors. But it all comes together. And it's just very authentic. I was an oddball, you know? I mean, uh, you probably don't know male quilter unless you're in the industry, but there are a lot of male quilters, but then black male quilters, it gets really slim. He went to Emerson, um, studied photography, and then he started looking at artists not necessarily quilt artists, painters and things and artists that inspired him. So Jean Michel Basquiat is like probably easily one of the uh, greatest artists of the 20th, 21st century. So after I was looking at him, biggest thing I realized is like art is all about being authentic. Like you gotta be who you are. And then all of a sudden one day he just did, I think it was his self-portrait and it was just right. It just all clicked, you know? It's like, it was super interesting to take a photo of myself and reimagine it into this. Luckily, I have, uh, some may say, a fantastic head of hair so that I could play around with that. Like, I can make that any shape I want. It really, like, showed me the possibilities using shapes. Like, alone, they don't mean anything, but when you add them all together, it comes to this face. Photography was my first avenue of art, and I learned so much. Ultimately, it taught me how to see the world. I look at a photograph, and then, like, say, this one specifically is my good friend Michael, who is very photogenic. And so the whole collection of pieces is basically that exploration of, like, looking at photos, seeing how I see them, and then interpreting them into the works that are, have been depicted now. This is a uh, photo of my good friend Penitnan, and she had this photo where it was literally her whole face covered the photograph. It's just the whole piece is her face, and I think it came out really well. And same goes for uh, Zeke, with another good friend from Atlanta. This is actually a uh, piece of my partner, Cecilia Garrett, and this is where she lives now in Brooklyn. Exploring the idea of what to highlight and why to highlight it is very fascinating to me, and I think Definitely going forward, it's going to be a, just a constant puzzle that I'm constantly building with each new piece. When you're staring at the quilts and looking at all those colors, you're realizing the things behind them. There's a lot to them, and they, they speak a lot of words. And in few places can we find so many quilts with so much flair pieced in bold, improvised geometries from salvaged cotton and fabric. I look at a photo and I will just start sketching. My approach is inspiration and like figuring out what photo I want to use because all it's based in photos or text. Then I sketch the photo out using my style that I've developed over the years. And then after that, I like basically piece it like almost like a puzzle mosaic type where I cut out the fabric and piece it on top of each other. And after I iron that all down, it's ready to go into my machine where I end up the final leg of it where it's just stitching it all down. So go time. Let's get a quick measurement so we know what we're looking for. What it looks like. My mom, yo, my mom's best. She's a master. She's a perfectionist. So this is going to go into the color. My sister owns a quilt shop. I'm a quilter. I teach up there. So, you know, he's immersed in it. He does have the blues. Just to be blunt, like, it's just women like my mom, you know, middle-aged white women. So I was just like, hey, I'm here. And I mean, they just took me in. Michael, at a very young age, actually made a quilt when he was about eight years old. He loved my sewing machine, so I let him do it. He entered it in a quilt show and got a participation ribbon. And 
that was the last quilt he made for many, many years because he's a basketball player and basketball took over his life. And that's all we did for many, many years was basketball. The time you've dedicated to this sport, just perfecting these little things, and it's the same goes for art. Like, you just gotta really dedicate, lock in, and um, no matter how tedious it is, if you really wanna do it, you have to work at it. So this is a portrait of Allen Iverson, who played for the Sixers and was an iconic basketball player. I mean, very influential to me. This one was, is, is really important to me because it like opened the floodgates to making art about basketball, which you're like, for the longest time, for whatever reason, I couldn't, but now it's just like, now it's just going, so it's very nice. Once I had my first show and there was like this avalanche of things that came out of that show, aside from like actually being able to make money from it, it was like people were like interested in me. With the amazing success of his show, I think he can definitely break into the art world. I know um, several museums have talked to him. That couple who came in Friday night. Oh that yeah, I did yeah. A tour with. Mm -hmm. One of them works at Mass Art. Oh and The okay. other one works um, at a startup in Cambridge. Nice. Which is, uh, Just knowing Michael beforehand, him as a basketball player, as a photographer, um, as a human. Just watching his trajectory and that story behind it. I think that's really special, and I think that's um, what makes these uh, these quilts really come alive. This is like one of, if not the showstopper, which is uh, my sister Latoya, who actually came to the show, which was like really meaningful for me to see her and then see her and her little daughters interact with it, and it was really cool. He did a piece of my son, um, Brandon, that was hanging at the show, and he did it just with just with the stitching. It's, you know, and it had the shape of his beard, and it was just amazing. I was walking around the, the gallery, and I was just like looking at everything, obviously, and uh, I look up and I see a picture of a bearded fellow, and I was like, oh, I kind of like that one. <laughs> and then I noticed a little squiggly line on the wrist and a little band on the forearm, and I was like, Oh, damn, that's me. <laughs> you know, so I thought, I thought that was really cool. I really did. Um, and I appreciate that, by the way. Absolutely, absolutely. I have this style, I'm using this medium, and now it's just about cranking out more work. There, there's an interest, there's an appetite for it. You can't fake the funk. I noticed that, like, after doing pieces, showing them, and talking about them, like, it doesn't matter what you're talking about, at least you're authentic about whatever it is. That's the most important.